welcome to Primetime Watchmaking in the News. Before going into this edition summary, I would like to thank all of you because we've crossed a really nice milestone for us with 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you again, thank you for all the comments and the positive feedback that we receive. So now let's go to Primetime. For the news of the month, we have to go back to the staggering price of slightly above 7 US million dollars reached by a steel Patek Philippe at the last Only Watch auction. Incredible price, but this is no ordinary watch. The reference 5016 is at the top of the pyramid for many watch collectors and uh, uh, serious aficionados. This reference was first introduced in 1993 and discontinued in 2011. I don't know exactly the number of watches that were produced, but uh, considering the complexity of the watch, I guess there weren't that many. For the watch put on auction by Patek Philippe, the reference 1516A was obviously a one-off and it came in a steel case with a really beautiful blue uh, enamel dial. We all knew that it would fetch a, quite a high price, but this high was really quite some surprise. So what does this tell us? Well, it says quite explicitly that uh, very rare and unique Patek Philippe are obviously something very special and people are willing to pay some serious premium for it. And to prove our point, and this is even more interesting when you put in perspective what another reference 5016 has just reached at a Hong Kong auction for Christie's. This uh, price was slightly above 500,000 US dollars, so there's more than 10 times difference between the two. So you have exclusivity and you have super exclusivity, and I guess this kind of really changes the game. So for the marketing coup of the month, and this time we'll leave a little question mark behind this one, but we have to talk about Tag Heuer's connected watch and the introduction that was made in New York at the beginning of this month. There was a lot of anticipation around this watch and many people turned out for the live webcast, which is quite unusual. So this really set the scene and what can we say about the product? So well. We have to admit that we haven't seen it up close and personal, so we can't really judge. But something really interesting that Tiger uh, has displayed there is that for people that would not be satisfied with this connected watch, they will be able to change it in a couple of years for a regular mechanical career. Well, I guess uh, it's a way for people of getting hooked, of having something on the wrist for a younger generation, and then to go to serious mechanical watches in a second stage. So we can definitely say that uh, Tiger is betting quite a lot on this one. And we just saw Mr. Beaver in another watch-related event where he mentioned that he just ordered 100,000 cases, numbers that we're not very accustomed to with uh, fine watchmaking, to support the promotion of uh, this uh, new watch. So 100,000 watches uh, equals more or less 150 million the US dollars of turnover, not bad, representing already a bit more than 10% of Tiger's uh, overall turnover. But this is where it becomes interesting, is that when you put this into perspective with what Apple has just uh, uh, realized, then you can kind of start to wonder. Some analysts will mention that Apple have sold 5 million of their Apple Watch, some people are already talking about 10 million. So you just see the difference uh, between the, the, the kind of mass consumer uh, brands, the power that they have in comparison to our famous watchmakers that we uh, love, obviously. But it's just two things that are in a certain way uncomparable and the war between the two is going to be a tough one and we, I think we know who's going to win. It's just a question of price and question of capacity of reach to a wider audience and that's what those power brands have. So let's go back to more traditional product launches and this month hasn't been as intense as previous month but we have to talk about Zenith that is celebrating this year's 150th anniversary and for the occasion they just came out with three tourbillon watches that are obviously very spectacular. So this launch really highlights the movement savoir-faire of Zenith as they came out with a three-dimensional tourbillon watch. This is the Academy Christophe Colomb watch, a two-dimensional tourbillon with a fusée chain transmission system in the Academy Georges Favre Jaco in honor of the brand's founder and a El Primero tourbillon watch. And we also want to talk about Overk and a very special version of the EMC. This was a very distinctive watch that was first introduced a couple of years ago with the brand's first in-house movement. This limited edition of five of the EMC pistol has some serious engraving on it. The real particularity of this watch is that it has an electronic oscillator inside which lets the user assess the chronometry of the watch in real time. Once you've done that you can adjust directly yourself the movement and uh, you can kind of play the watchmaker's role in this one. In terms of general news we have to talk unfortunately about the weak export figures. Uh, we already mentioned that in the previous edition. This has been confirmed unfortunately in November 
November and uh, this will obviously have an impact on the watchmaking scene. What is interesting to point out is that the brands that have invested into new watches and new collections of the last two three years are the ones that are being slightly less hurt. We've seen already quite a lot of changes in terms of the people at the head of uh, many brands and uh, we'll see how this will uh, impact the industry. It's also interesting to note that uh, even power brands as Rolex are adapting to this and we already mentioned this during the last Basel World when they introduced a watch for slightly above 5,000 Swiss francs but now they're kind of uh, uh, making some of their watches a bit less available making them obviously more desirable so even Rolex is adapting to the time. This is it for uh, this edition of Primetime. Next edition of Primetime will be slightly different because instead of being on the first uh, Friday of uh, next month we'll uh, air our new Primetime just before Christmas with a total recap of 2015 kind of the best of 2015. So thanks again for watching and uh, have a great time!